Uh, let's start in the in the AL uh, the N- the AL East. Mm. So what do you guys have going the on in the AL East? Close to uh, boss's heart over there. Yes. I'm ready. Why don't you start us off, boss? I know you're, you're I got, excited about this one. Surprise! I got the Yankees. <laughs> yeah. Right. I got the Yankees winning the division. I mean, they obviously upgraded the lineup. They got. Uh, you know this guy, John Carlos Stanton. Never heard of him. Anyone? Who's that? NL MVP, reigning MVP. Yo, uh, he was on Sports Illustrated with no shirt on. Sexy guy. <sighs> Chiseled. I Yo, think we've had this conversation did you, did, before. Did like you feel it? a little tingle? Yo, he's a hot dude. Man. <laughs> a little tingle. Yo, he's like six seven too. Yeah, he started vibrating. Ah. Yeah. Um. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> they got Neil Walker. Like they made a lot of depth moves. Brandon Drury they brought in. So they made a lot of depth moves that beyond John Carlos Stanton, who everyone's talking about, that bolstered their infield because going into the all season they didn't have a second baseman or a third baseman to start the year and they kind of shored that up even though greg bird is hurt right now um they still have tyler austin and the minors who they could recall uh neil walker who could, they could also put at first to run out there and tyler wade who's gonna make the team out of camp which is uh impressive because he's a prospect and he he arrived last year but he didn't really do too well he's got the speed so if he can bring his bat up to major league level he, he could be a problem uh, but, yeah, I, I like the Yankees to win it all. Their rotation is kind of sketchy. But if they get to July in first place or, you know, neck and neck with the Red Sox, they have the prospects to move to bring in a big arm like a Michael Fulmer or someone they could have bought in last year. So I like the Yankees, you know, Severino and Judge, mm. in my opinion. That's why I don't like people telling up the Yankees because they were rookies last year. So we've never seen them put together like back-to-back efforts or anything. So in my head, there's still question marks, but I think they'll be good enough to, you know, keep them in the running with the Red Sox for first place. And then ultimately at the deadline, they'll make a move to put themselves over. So I got the Yankees winning the division. I got the Red Sox in a wild card spot. Uh, They went out and got J.D. Martinez, but they made most of their moves last year. They brought in Chris Sale. Um, They still have David Price. They need Rick Porcello to return to like the Cy Young he was two years ago. Um, But yeah, I mean... They're stacked, too. But they got a lot of question marks, too. They got some young guys that got called up last year. Ben Attendee. Yeah, and then, who's uh, in the running for rookie of the year. Ben Attendee is low-key one of the better players in, in baseball. He's only 23 years old. Yeah. Don't forget. And he had a really good year last year. 271, 20 home runs, 90 RBIs, 20 stolen bases. F- uh, 352 on base percentage, which is really impressive for a young guy. I think he could take the next step. I'm, I'm on the same page as you, man. I, I got the Yankees winning this division, and I got the Red Sox in the, in the wild card. With the Yankees... Someone that no one's talking about too is Gary Sanchez. This guy is such an under the radar superstar. They hit thirty home runs last year, if I'm not mistaken, and he, and he missed the month, the first it, month of the season. Such because you know he gets outshadowed and outshined by Aaron Judge because he's he's a bigger star and he's just a bigger dude. But Gary Sanchez is a guy that's really gonna really gonna have a difference. I really like Brandon Drury. I, I he's one of the he was one of the up and coming prospects in a in a loaded position uh, with Arizona and. The Yankees have gone to Arizona before and taken someone out of their loaded position, and he worked out and DD Gregorius. So, like, when you're talking about Brandon Drury, they got that whole left side of the infield that's di- former Diamondbacks. Now, I really like that left side. And Sonny Gray, that the addition of him last year, uh, that was an excellent deal at the deadline because of exactly this. Because now you start the year with Sonny Gray as your number three starter, and when you start the year, Sonny Gray as your number three starter. You give yourself depth in that rotation, and it takes the pressure off a guy like Jordan Mon- Jordan Montgomery, who might be in, in that starting rotation. And then you go to the bullpen, and that's really the star of the show. As good as the lineup is, and as decent as the starters are, Dylan Batances, Robinson, Tommy Canelli, Araldis Chapman, those are fucking. Th- that's it's Chad Green. Chad Green on top of that. Um, Adam Warren is even nice. Yeah. So it's like. That's that's going to be a tough bullpen to score on. So if the Yankees have a lead going into the sixth inning, <laughs> it's going to be hard for teams to win. And that it's going to, like you said, I think the Yankees' problem is going to be early, both early in the season and early in games. Can they get that lead? Can they build a lead in the beginning of the season? And can they can they build a lead in the beginning of games? And if they can, they're going to be the best team in the league. Yeah. Also, Sanchez, he kind of carried the Yankees after the All Star break. Yeah, that month of August he was on fire when Judge was slumping. Because I made that I made that point a couple of times. How if Judge would have had his August in April, you could have probably sent them down because it was so bad. It's just that he was so hot in the beginning of the year going into the All Star break. Yo, that that what, it's they're probably gonna be three, four, five. Sanchez, Judge, Stanton. yeah, they've been experimenting with it, like Aaron Judge batting lead off and shit. So yeah, I don't one know. to six is crazy. I feel like and yo, think about Stan. Right, he he led the league in home runs last year. 
and he was playing in one of the hardest places they hit home runs. And now he goes to Yankees, where I know you're going to hate this, but the it seems box. like right field is like 120 feet. <laughs> the Yo, it just box. feels like that. But though. the other team is playing there, too. So. Uh, Fair, just, they, take, just take it. <laughs> All you Yankee fans, just take it. Nah, but bro, th- if you hit it to I the mean, gaps, it's like uh, it's. Also, you're talking about a division where it's all hitters' ballparks. Band box. So yeah. yeah, it's not exactly you're not. Right, yeah, the rest it's of not the division a big is a like hitter friendly. But parks. if you're Camden John Yards, Carlo, is just as much of a band box as yeah. Yankee Stadium is. Same with same with uh, Fenway. Fenway. I was to say Wrigley, but yeah, same with Fenway. Uh, talking about Andrew Benintendi, I want to I want to go over to the Red Sox a little bit. I think he low key has a chance to be MVP this season. Like I really think that if you put him in the lineup now and you and you put JD Martinez behind him, and you let him hit second in front of some guys that could really hit, that's a that's a player that has a chance to do a lot of damage. And it's it's really the three fifty two on base percentage from last year. He's a very patient hitter ahead of his time. He's only twenty three years old. He's been getting better every single year. Like this is, last year was his first year, but even in the minors, he gets better every single year. I think Ben Benintendi is going to be the key. He's going to be the guy at the end of the season where the Red Sox can be like, all right, that's the best player on the squad. I think the Red Sox need David Price healthy. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I think that's the X factor. They bro. need Mookie Betts to return to that MVP runner-up Mookie. type caliber play. And, yeah, that, like, th- I think those are the two biggest pieces that Boston's relying on. And Xander Bogarts to you know add that pop that he had two years ago too. Keep in mind, Boston didn't hit any home runs last year. After, you know, they were towards the bottom of the league. After leading the league in home runs the year before. Right. The only difference was Big Poppy. Right. That's why I think that J.D. Martinez addition is really huge because it gives him that length, a lineup lengthening guy who can kind of be like a Big Poppy in terms of like putting him in the cleanup spot and just leaving him there. And you know where you're getting out of J.D. Martinez. So that's a that was a huge, huge addition. I think the Red Sox, I was kind of lukewarm on. Uh, going into the season before that addition, and now I think that they could give the Yankees a, a shot in the division, but I think that they're going to be in the first wild card. So who do you got in the AL East? I got the Yankees winning. I got both those teams coming out, too. Oh, so everyone has the same AL East? Yeah. And, you, know, that, you know what that means, right? Yo, can I get a quick AL East question, though? Bedtime? Bedtime. Is Machado an Oriole, like, August 1st? I don't know if the Orioles will be bad enough where he's going to be sold. Maybe. But here's the thing, though. if With him being a free agent, don't you got to pull him aside and be like, yo, can you tell us like what's good? Because if you're not going to be here next year, we can't afford to lose you and not get nothing in return. We have to get something for you. I don't think he's re-upping there. I don't think they were going to pay him. You've seen Judge has already uh, on social media been like, yo, you look good. And nah, he told him that. He told him that. That's what it was. In yeah. a spring training game, and he got like in trouble for that. They said it was like a violation, yeah, 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 which is bullshit. But what? That's what they do anyway. Said, yo, you think he, when they're chilling in the off season, they're not talking like, yo, like, yo, come on, man, come good. to New York and be fire. Yeah, me, you, and judges. That's what Machado said. He's like, dude, he didn't like. He said one thing to me. It was like, cool, like, and it was in jest, like, yo, whatever, like, yo, come bowl with me, like, it's crazy. Okay, you see, probably say that to every single player who's and, nice. And, and yo, you don't think any All Star game or Pro Bowl people are doing that? Also, yo, wouldn't it be fire if we played together? Hundred percent. You're gonna find them all for that. Let's think all those LeBron teams got together. They need one of those uh, legal tampering periods like the NFL has. What? What a, what a ridiculous period. Legal tampering. The fuck? I think all that is BS. <laughs> yeah, I will say this too it. about the Blue Jays. My bad, just before we move on from the AL East, that their rotation is low key, like pretty solid with Aaron Sanchez if he can avoid his blistering issues. Strowman's hurt to start the year, but you know he was up there in terms of ERA leaders. He had a good year following his World Baseball Classic. And, uh, yeah, I mean, they always have a, that potential MVP candidate, Josh Donaldson. They brought in Randall Gritchick, who Tim was a high on. I remember when we first started this podcast, and, like, it was opening day in April, a couple months after we got started, and we were watching in your basement. Tim was calling Randall Gritchick as, like, shady fantasy gem. Yeah. This was three years ago? I think two. Two seasons ago. Yeah, two seasons ago. But, yeah, I mean, they made some moves, too. You know, they lost Jose Batista, who was a Blue Jay legend and stuff like that. So, I think they'll be, you know, finishing in third place in that division and then followed by the O's and then you think, the you woeful think, Rays. You think Little Vlad gets called up this year? Probably. And Bo Bichette, too. I think that's Dante Bichette's son. They got the legacy. Former MLB player, yeah. The, the, the Blue Jays, they don't really have a true ace. Stroman is, I guess, their ace, but... Uh, he's I don't know he's not the traditional. I think Sanchez you know, could be that guy if he's maybe. like healthy. Maybe you know, and they have Roberto Osuna who I like. I feel like they know. have a lot of number three pitchers. Yeah, like, all their guys are solid number three pitchers. Yeah. Yeah. Jay Happ, Estrada. Yeah, you know, but solid, just no stopper. Yeah. All right, so in the AL East we have Yankees and Red Sox. Uh, Red Sox Consensus and wild card. division wildcard. Yep. Yo, Carlos Gomez. 
For the Rays? If he hits 40 home runs, they might contend. Nah, come on. <laughs> nah, dude. They traded away their three best players. I don't, I'm Bro. Pulling your chains. Lomo, D- Souza, Longoria. Dickerson. Dickerson. All had, like, they're all the top four in the home runs on their team last year, and they're all gone. Like, what do you do? I don't even know. I, I can't even, like, begin to figure out what they're doing down there. Oh, my.